Welcome alumni, students, faculty, and staff of the Faculty of Mathematics, as well as any others who are joining us today from around the world. It's wonderful that even in the midst of these difficult and extraordinary times, the Waterloo Math family can still find ways to connect, engage, and share. I'm Cindy Forbes, Faculty of Math alumni, class of 79, and the Global Chief Analytics Officer for Manulife, at least at the moment as I'm retiring at the end of October. I have the pleasure to, of introducing Dean Mark Gies Breck, who is going to share with us his vision for the future of math, while also highlighting some of the major accomplishments of the past year. Mark is a distinguished computer scientist with nearly 20 years experience at Waterloo. Previous to becoming Dean, he served as the director of the da David R. Charrington School of Computer Science for six years. He was also the associate director from 2009 to 11 and the director of undergraduate studies from 2002 to 2005 within the Sheridan School of Computer Science. Prior to joining Waterloo in 2001 as associate professor, Mark worked at the University of Western Ontario, the University of Manitoba, and IBM Canada. He completed his BSc at UBC and earned both his MSc and PhD in computer science at the University of Toronto. He's a distinguished scientist of the Association of Computing Machinery and serves on several conference and journal editorial boards as well as the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council committees. I hope you will join me in welcoming Mark in his new role as Dean. And thank you for joining us today. And welcome to Black and Gold Day at home, the Faculty of Mathematics. Of course, because it's virtual, this year's event is sure to feel a little different from previous years. But we're optimistic that it will deliver much of what you love about this day, whether it's lively discussion, interesting lectures, or family-friendly fun and games. I'm speaking to you today from a room that might look familiar to some of you. It's a recreation of the Faculty of Mathematics' famous Red Room. The Red Room is, of course, where the University of Waterloo's main computers have been located since 1967. It was originally home of the IBM Model 360, the IBM 360 Model 75, the largest computer in Canada at the time. As such, the room is a symbol of the innovation that has defined our faculty through the years and a perfect setting for today's talk on the faculty's future. Many of you likely already know me, but for those of you who don't, I'm Mark, as Cindy said, and as, as of this past July, I'm the new Dean of the Faculty of Mathematics. And what a time this has been. Now, for the past six years, I've served as, a David R., as the director of the David R. Charrett School of Computer Science. These have been some of the most rewarding years of my academic career. During this period, we hired 25 new professors, and I personally interviewed more than 130 candidates for this position. We've been seen in the QS rankings in computer science. This is the main scorecard of computer science schools in the world, rise from, to number 22 in the world. We worked hard to diversify the school in terms of the students, the academic programs, the research areas, the income and the alumni engagement. That's you. We established a new directorate for women in computer science and have seen the percentage of women in our undergraduate programs grow from a worrisome 15% to 25% this year, actually a little more. I've been lucky enough to work with so many exceptional faculty and staff members at Waterloo as a researcher, as a graduate supervisor, as a teacher, and as, a, and as an administrator. This job gave me a deep understanding of how the math, faculty of mathematics works the incredible opportunities in front of us, and the potential pitfalls and risks. Did I mention COVID-19 yet? And it's also showed me the depth of talent, collegiality, and goodwill that we have in math that is going to take us anywhere we want to go. I want to talk about the faculty accomplishment. I'm very proud to be a member of this remarkable family and will approach my new role with a sense of responsibility and frankly, boundless enthusiasm. So what makes this faculty so special? There are lots of reasons, but let me list a few. We're North America's only dedicated faculty of mathematics, possibly the only one in the world. We have over 42,000 alumni working in more than 105 countries. And we're a research powerhouse with a long history of seminal work in combinatorics and graph theory, mathematical modeling, health uh, informatics, cryptography, security, privacy, data science, and statistics, to name but a few areas. The list really does go on and on. We're home to 11 Canada Research Chairs, 11 University Research Chairs, 16 Fellows of the Royal Society of Canada, two Fellows of the Canadian Mass Society, and four Killam Prize winners. And of course, there's a huge entrepreneurial tradition. It's the foundation of our faculty. We're a real hotbed of entrepreneurial talent. We have more than 200 startups and spin-offs, 
emerging from the faculty, including the university's first startup, Wattford. This is more than anywhere else in Canada. And we lead dynamic partnerships with modern industry leaders, including RBC and Thomson Reuters. We're also looking to lead the way when it comes to gender inequity in math and CS. Our student population is now more than 40% women, and we're laying the long-term groundwork for gender parity in all our disciplines. In the student populations and amongst our faculty and researchers. Now, let me highlight one more pertinent reason for pride. The faculty is home to remarkable, courageous, selfless individuals who in moments of challenge and crisis never fail to go beyond. This has been true throughout our history and is especially true today as we can confront this unprecedented pandemic. Now many will know the story of Bill Tutt, a brilliant Waterloo mathematician and mathematics professor who, will lead, who was a leading member of the now legendary Bletchley Park team of wartime codebreakers. He and his team worked feverishly to stop Hitler's advance and in doing so to define modern cryptography and code breaking with the analysis of the Lorenz cipher. Bill went on to a stellar career in mathematics at Waterloo, defining the foundations of modern graph theory and matroid theory. Today, following in Tut's heroic footsteps, many of our students, researchers and alumni are challenging their energy, mathematical and talent, talent and expertise into initiatives that are addressing COVID-19 directly the challenge of our time. Let me give you a few examples of the great work being done. Waterloo Applied Math Professor Chris Bausch, who you may have seen in the news, is an expert in mathematical and computer modeling of infectious diseases. He's been prominently sharing his experiences on modeling vaccination and social distancing measures in the COVID-19 outbreak. He recently released a study that uses mathematical models to show how the COVID-19 virus spreads within childcare and elementary school classrooms of different sizes. Now talk about relevance. This work is directly informing the decision and policy makers in our government and institutions. Endowed chair and chair of computer science, Jimmy Lin, is con contributing to the fight against this COVID global pandemic by helping policy makers and clinicians make better informed decisions, and by helping researchers generate new insights through the Neural Covidex initiative. His work applies state-of-the-art neural networks and AI techniques to answering important and vital questions from the massive COVID-19 open research data set provided by the Allen Institute for AI. And on the entrepreneurial side, Rapid Novor, a st company started and co-founded by Waterloo math professor Bin Ma, is currently using their technology to decode the antibodies in the blood of patients who are recovering from COVID-19. They hope that the information they reveal can be used to develop new treatments. And finally, our own CEMC, the Center for Education in Mathematics and Computing, has been at the forefront of online ed ed education and outreach for almost 50 years. Today in these COVID times, their work even looks even more prescient. CEMC have launched an online tool to help children continue with their math and computer science education from home. Their website saw a 200% increase in st student engagement this past school year, especially during the early months of the pandemic. They had more than 10 million page views this year and up, and up from a still impressive 3 million page views the year before. And I'm barely scratching the surface with this list of accomplishments. So many other students, faculty and alumni and staff have stepped forward during this crisis. COVID-19 has shown us that our work as mathematicians has never been more important or urgent. After all, math is key to modeling outbreaks, fueling economic recovery, and enabling people to connect and learn online. But more than that, COVID-19 demonstrates something vital about our faculty. With our remarkable wealth of talent and expertise and our entrepreneurial mindset, we are equipped to address the world's biggest problems, whether it's mitigating climate change, enhancing healthcare, strengthening security and privacy, or simply spreading enthusiasm for math. Waterloo Matthews are busy developing solutions. But this raises an important question. How do we empower our people to reach their full potential as students, researchers, and entrepreneurs? How do we ensure the faculty builds upon past successes to achieve an even greater impact in the future? I want to talk a bit about the faculty's future. And I want to talk about the vision for the future, which is laid out in our exciting 2018 strategic plan. Now, Strategic plans aren't usually preceded with adjectives like exciting, but this one should be. There are four key areas to discuss, people, research, education, and outreach. In each of these, I'll sketch out briefly what the aspirations and priorities are. 
And then in the time remaining, I hope to field some questions from you. So let's talk about people. Perhaps the most vital and yet competitive area we must participate in is the recruitment of the very best research and educational talent. As you know, as our alumni, these are the very same. People are at the foundation of everything we do in the Faculty of Mathematics. The accomplishment of our students, staff, and faculty, and alumni drive our ex excellent reputation. To achieve our vision, we must put people first. We must attract and nurture the right people, and we have to foster and create the right environment for the interactions, the discussions, and that mathematical serendipity to happen. I've worked, some would say relentlessly, to encourage the strongest faculty applications in the world to come to Waterloo, create positions and packages to attract them, to set the bar unbelievably high for hiring, on par with the best institutions of the world. However, as a faculty, we need to provide greater resources and more strategic infrastructure to make this work. We need to establish more research chairs through transformative industry and government partnerships and from philanthropy and investment from our alumni and community like you. We need to make Waterloo a magnet for the best research talent in the world, computer science, mathematics, and the statistics and actuarial science. We're working to create that irreduce, irresistible combination of education, research, and environment that will continue to attract the best undergrads and graduate students, faculty, and staff even as other top global institutions are courting them. We're going to build on our excellence, our environment, and our vast experience, but also on our inclusivity, our diversity, and our collegiality to draw top talent to Waterloo and to present their accomplishments to the world. While we're on the topic of people and community, let me, on talk, let me touch on a more somber issue that, that's affecting us all. Over this past spring and summer, the world witnessed tragic acts of racism and racist violence. I am deeply troubled by these events and, like, and so many others like them, which happen every day across the world, including in Canada and including in here in Waterloo. We as a faculty and as a university are deep, com deeply committed to advancing equity for black, indigenous, and people of color and creating an exclusive, inclusive, diverse, and equitable community. Achieving this goal is essential to our university and Canada's future, but we still have a long way to go. We in the Faculty of Mathematics acknowledge that we're not immune from racism, whether overt or systemic, and the negative impacts that result from racist structures. We're going to take action to do better in the future through student, faculty, and staff support and engagement, through data collection and analysis, we're mathematicians after all, and through better consultation and engagement with our community and beyond. We also talk about research creativity and innovation. These are hard terms to get a hold of. The Waterloo's Faculty of Mathematics is widely recognized for our breadth of expertise and diversity of interests. We're home to world-renowned researchers who explore a full range of areas ideas. These include applied areas such as data science, optimization, and, and geophysical fluid dynamics. Foundational problems in such areas as number theory, combinatorics, and statistical inference. And cutting-edge technologies like human-computer interaction and quantum computing. We're also leading societal change for good in emerging areas like artificial intelligence, financial technology, and privacy-enhancing technology. I've already mentioned the panel on math and medicine happening at 10 a.m. today, which will feature some of our researchers bringing mathematical theory to the applied side and back. While we have a stellar record of success in research and innovation, we are not content to stand still. We desire to build on this success and amplify the prominence and impact of the Faculty of Mathematics Research. So, how do we do this? Well, for one, we've got to find ways to engage, encourage, recognize, and reward research excellence. We must invest in improvements in the future, and in, in, improvements to the research environment. And we must leverage our scale and our breadth to seize opportunities at the, at the nexus of our many areas of expertise. At the same time, we must capitalize on opportunities to collaborate with leaders in industry. Top companies frequently seek us out for a simple reason, our combination of research expertise in cutting edge fields, entrepreneurial initiative, and talent is truly unmatched in Canada and I'd argue around the world. As a result, we're uniquely equipped to solve their problems. Now we at the university, we in turn benefit from the, this wisdom and expertise of our industry partners, both in education 
and driving new research ideas. First and foremost, Waterloo is an undergraduate and graduate education facility. We've been admired all over the world for our undergraduate and graduate students and programs for almost for more than 50 years. There's no better evidence of this than the high demand for our students worldwide. Leading institutions and companies are lined up literally to hire Waterloo alumni. It's just that simple. But we cannot sit on our laurels. The world has noticed us. They've noticed our success. To build on this stature, we must enhance recruitment efforts to track diverse cohorts of outstanding students and refine admission processes to help define and identify the strongest candidates from an increasingly exceptional pool. And since we attract undergraduates and students of the highest caliber, we must provide an academic environment of commensurate quality. We must recognize our students' excellence and respond with opportunities for challenge, support, and exploration to build on the diverse individual strengths. In a world where change is a constant and the pace of change is rapid and increasing, it is vital that we do not simply react to change, but we prepare our students for a changing future. While a fundamental education can help prepare students to adapt to unforeseen changes, the way we deliver that change also matters. With that same mathematical precision we use in our research, we must identify and embrace progressive ways to teach, to assess, and to encourage our students. Waterloo, more than any place, has the depth and breadth of experience to leverage our existing strengths, experiential and online education. That is co-op. COVID-19 has pushed us online very suddenly. And Waterloo Math has been lucky to have the experience to do this remarkably well. Here, luck is about leaving in an area for many years and about the Herculean effort of the faculty, staff, and graduate students over the past six months. Online education is far more than simply putting a prop in front of a camera. It has to be an all new approach. We are rethinking our educational and research delivery mechanisms. And even more broadly, we're reimagining what it is to be a university. This means thinking about courses and delivery, but also about academic programs and also about academic community. We're already thinking about how to move beyond COVID. We are not simply going to snap back to the pre-COVID world next year when this is over, assuming optimistically that it is over. The changes we've made, the ideas we've had, the things we've learned, and the mistakes we've made must be analyzed, dissected, and distilled. Again, we're mathematicians after all. This is how we will inform what Waterloo Math delivers, mathematics and computer science education and research, and thus will inform how the world does it too. In the coming years, we will advance online learning opportunities for undergraduate and graduate students without sacrificing quality. And by virtue of our approach, our innovation and our skills will maintain our differentiating strength in experiential education during this time. Education does not stop at graduation from university, whether it's a bachelor, a bachelor's, or a PhD. Education is something we do throughout our lives. Citing new mission of the University of Waterloo, and Waterloo Math in particular, is promoting lifelong learning. For us, this means providing educational modules and upgrades on important technical trends in our lives, like machine learning or computer security. It means certificates and micro-credentials for evolving areas and professional designations. It means that Waterloo Math can be part of connecting you to the latest ideas and technologies throughout your careers, and that this can be recognized with a name you trust. And of course, for us in the faculty, it means we connect with your world, with your industry, with your innovation, and continue that symbiotic relationship that works so well at Waterloo. Finally, cooperative education continues to be our most well-known and widely appreciated educational program. It's a huge part of what makes the University of Waterloo's education so unique and so effective. Thanks to co-op, Students develop rich and diverse skill sets and gain a massive competitive advantage in the job market. As we move forward, cooperative education will continue to be a key priority for the math faculty of mathematics. We will seek to maintain and enhance our leadership position in cooperative education through innovations and expansion of this co-op experience beyond the undergraduate programs and into the graduate world and internships. I want to talk about the other mission of our university, which is outreach. We view our educational mission as extending beyond our students. 
In today's technological society, it's not just those who choose to study math and computer science in university who need mathematical acumen. Increasingly, everyone needs a strong grounding in math and computer science. This is why outreach and communication have always been so important to us. We seek to capture the imagination of people from our local communities and around the world, building their interest and enthusiasm for mathematics, computer science, and statistics. And it's working. I've already mentioned the work CEMC has been doing in the midst of the pandemic. We'll get a taste of what CEMC does later today at the 3 p.m. session when Ian Vanderberg hosts Building the Brains for the Future, an hour of interactive math and computing fun for children. Moving forward, our commitment to outreach will continue to be a differentiator for the faculty. We want to find new and exciting ways to engage the broader population. Specifically, it is important that we expand our outreach programs to connect with diversified audiences and new communities from coast to coast to coast in Canada, as well as around the world. This means supporting K-12 teachers, both through our materials and our highly successful Masters of Mathematics for Teachers and proactively engaging indigenous teachers and those in remote communities. I want to complete, conclude by talking about our bold vision. We believe boldness is absolutely critical at this stage in our evolution. The faculty is to play a leading role in addressing the big challenges of our age, things like coronavirus and, virus and climate change. We must think big and we must act big. This overview has been very high level and you may wonder, what specifically will you do to realize these goals? Let me leave with one exciting example of a project that will bring our vision to life. I spoke earlier about the importance of people and the imperative to continue attracting and retaining the world's best minds in math, whether at the student or faculty level. I also talked about achieving this goal means creating an environment that fosters well-being, inclusion, and connection. Math 4 is a new building that will address this need in the Faculty of Mathematics. We're working with top architects to design a space that will put people first and actively cultivates the kind of math, vibrant mathematical environment that will pull top minds from around the world to the Faculty of Mathematics. The building will enrich the student experience by creating new social and collaboration spaces that will maximize a range of interactions from planned meetings the spontaneous social encounters, that serendipity I mentioned earlier. In doing so, they will nurture a stronger sense of community and belonging to, to within the student population, which is so important. Math 4 will encourage entrepreneurial activity as a home to the ideas hub, community for self-starting students and faculty who are infinitely curious and determined to solve the world's biggest problems. The space will feature cross-cutting technological in infrastructure and a suite of entrepreneurship resources including the Sandbox, a collection of cross-cutting tools and software that will allow students to effectively tackle their curiosities and create powerful solutions to massive problems. Peer-to-peer, -peer, a platform to exchange ideas and discover new opportunities, both in a physical space as well as in a virtual format. And Alumni Talks, an opportunity for current students to learn from the thousands of alumni all around the world. The building also will accelerate cutting-edge math and computer science research by providing much needed space for research labs and centers, including areas like math and medicine and security and privacy, so important in these days. Sustainability is a top priority for the Faculty of Mathematics, and with this in mind, we plan Math 4 to the highest environmental standards. The thermal, the thermal performance of Math 4 will be rated as passive house, which is considered to be the most rigorous energy-based design standard in the design and construction industry today. As a result, it will consume up to 90% less heating and cooling energy than conventional buildings. Impressive, and this is so important as we tackle climate change. I want to close with an important qualification. We can't do any of this alone. To realize our vision, we will need the help of our extended math family, especially you, our alumni. This is your faculty of mathematics as much as it is ours, and we know how deeply you care about its future. We value your insight, and we want to hear your thoughts about our plans for the future. We have time for questions and comments right now, so this is an opportunity to begin this discussion. But I hope to continue it beyond this lecture and over the years ahead. To this end, I'll be embarking on a listening tour in the upcoming months and hope to speak to all of you, whether virtually or hopefully in person, about the Faculty of Mathematics and its future. Please keep your eye out for details on this. In the meantime, I'd like to open the floor to any questions you might have.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. That was an inspiring lecture. And I love the vision for the Faculty of Math. It really resonates with me and the building looks uh, very impressive. So the, uh, the vision that you laid out or the strategy that you laid out was uh, put together before you became Dean. So I'm just wondering, uh, as I do the lead off question here to give people to, uh, time to, uh, to put their questions in the Q&A, uh, I'm just wondering how you uh, will put your own stamp uh, as in your, your term as Dean on the, on the vision for the Faculty of Math. That's a question I, I think about every night. I, so for some context, I interviewed for this position as Dean in the week before COVID hit, and I prepared much of my vision, if you like, in the, in the, in the month or two before that. And then the world changed. And I like to think that this is, um, that it's actually, I'm not sure how much the vision changed so much as it, it focused on particular aspects about what, that we're, we're making these changes in online education, we're making these changes in what it means to be a university, what it means to do education um, in a way that we've never done before. And we're going, and you know, and we're doing it very suddenly. And so for, for me that it, it, you know, it's a strange thing to say, but there's an opportunity in this because suddenly the skills that we've built, the leadership that we have, is at the, these ideas are going to change our world going forward. I mean, I mentioned some of the researchers there, some of the people who are, are doing things in the COVID environment. I think some of these things are about how we do these things in a university, how we interact, how we will interact in the future. We're not going back. I mean, we're not going back to the, to the same world we had before. We're going to take what we did. We're going to, we're going to learn from how we interact and we're going to learn how we are connecting students. And we should analyze this very carefully. We should make sure that we're, we're pulling what is working and we're pulling what is not working. And we're making the, the tough decisions, if you like, to sort of create that. Now, how does that sort of work into a, a vision? I think it, it, it really is about thinking how, it's about shaping education, it's about shaping innovation, and it's about shaping the connections between them over the coming years. That's there in what I was thinking before, but now it's much more connected to what's happening in society and how we can affect our society with this. So it's something that we're going to have, it's an evolving process. It's going to have to change over the, over the coming, I was going to say years, but it's going to have to change over the coming months because you know, this, is, this, is, this is very much an evolving situation, but it's one that's you know, weirdly exciting because you know, those, those same ideas are what are going to, are going to take us forward into into um, into the to the new normal, if you like. Uh, well, that, thank you, Mark, for that. Um, and uh, I agree, COVID has certainly upended everybody's uh, strategy. Uh, and it's it was great to hear that the University of Waterloo and the Faculty of Math are are well positioned to deal with the impact. Uh, for my next question, uh, how can alumni help the Faculty of Math? achieve its exciting mission? Alumni, in a sense, are our exciting mission because, of course, what we are uh, an organization that, uh, that, that, takes, that, that reaches out to, to, to our youth. It, it provides a, um, an educational experience when you're at the university, but it also is the, the family beyond that. And I, I think I mentioned in, in my talk about the feedback that we get. And that feedback happens um, sort of very directly when we create industrial partnerships. And it also happens in, a, in an engagement where we get feedback. And we have events like this where we just have a, a chance to talk. But I, I think also, you know, there, there's, that, there's the, the connections that we make backwards tell us in academia, and especially in the Faculty of Mathematics at the University of Waterloo, what is working and what is not. And I think we're going to see a wave of this because, you know, industry is also in the same place that we are. They're, they're, they're rethinking how they do things. Pe people, our alumni, are rethinking how we, how, we, how we live our lives, how we interact. So who better to do that than researchers who are, who are studying human-computer interaction? Who better to do that than, than researchers who are, are studying security and privacy 
you know, which have become so essential in our world. So what can, what can alumni do to return to your questions, uh, to, to your question? I think alumni can provide that, that link, that link back to, uh, um, into their educational experience and tell us where it has taken them and tell us where that experience, what that experience is doing, and, and sort of say where things are, are needed, what, what will be the next step, because that's how we find it out. We, we, we find out this by, by living in this world and by hearing about this world. Now, of course, alumni can also support our efforts, um, you know, this, it's, it's uh, um, you know, in, in tangible ways with these partnerships and, and, and with donations. But I think it's, the flow of ideas is equally important. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, we're getting some uh, questions from uh, the people who have dialed in to or called into the, the lectures. Right. So here is one. Sitting on the other side of the planet, I'm more than a bit curious to know where Math 4 will or is being built. <laughs> well, I have to, I'll, I'll paint you a picture. And depending on wh when you were an alumni, um, I'm sitting in a recreation of the Red Room, but we're actually in the Davis Center. And the Davis Center is sort of an L-shaped building, and on, the, on the, the west side is MC. And we hope to create a mathematics quad. So it's the fourth side, which is now a, a, an old chemistry building, which is sort of on its last name. It's called Chem Chemistry 2. And our hope is that, that, that Math 4 will be where Chemistry 2 is now. And so it will compete the quad. And I have to say this was essential because when we were looking at different buildings, um, there were, there were uh, locations that were far flung. And one of the things that I've always believed, and now I believe even more, is that we have to, we have to be contiguous. So mathematics, as I mean, my vision is very much of mathematics as a connected faculty. It's not as, as, as five different uh, units, it's not as computer science on one side, and pure math on the other side and not, not speaking. So the idea that we're, in a, that we're in four connected buildings around a square I think is brilliant. And I, I think it's sort of the, it will cre also create a beautiful space in the green space, you know, in the, in the quad itself. So very classical architecture, both. The, the building itself is not a classical architecture, it's very modern, but it creates a beautiful square, which I love. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Uh, another question uh, from one of the folks who are, is on the call. How do you plan to raise the awareness of the faculty of math from a, around the world? And how can um, alumni uh, help in bringing more awareness? That's a great question. I, I mean, I think we have to acknowledge, um, so part of this is about who are, who are where, <laughs> identifying where and who our, our alumni are. And I mean, one of the things we need to do a better job of, and this is about resources and this is about, uh, um, about uh, communication, is we need, to, we, need to, we need to hear from people in, a, in an even greater way and we need to engage people. And we have put together mechanisms for uh, like profound impact to sort of bring, bring our alumni home, if you were, to hear from them, to connect them to, to our world. And I think that's, that's, that's one part of it. Um, I also think it's about where we target our outreach efforts and our recruitment efforts. And so we create all these wonderful tools. And often these are free tools and open tools, but there's a, there's a next step and it's about placing those tools. So it's about, um, so we, we've actually, so now we're, we're actively re recruiting in, um, in India and doing outreach in India, in Indonesia. Um, we have a, 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 a actuarial science and accountancy uh, organization in Indonesia, as well as uh, well-established roots in China and, and, and East Asia. So, you know, I, I think it's about continuing to develop all the great educational tools and all the out great outreach tools, but it's also about getting out there and talking to you as alumni around the world and making sure that the things that we're bringing are things that are relevant and well positioned in those markets. Uh, thank you, Mark. And actually, Manulife, when I was chief actuary, we, we were the ones that uh, worked with the university to set up the actual program in Indonesia. In, in, in Ready, the Ready project. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a really, it's been a really exciting program, and, and we're looking at how to, you know, what the next step is with Ready right now. So our next question, any chance of an MIT style online open access um, a course, uh, co access to course lecture recordings? Sounds like the intention, maybe a model to look at. 
Yeah, it's interesting. So, I mean, MIT is one model. This, I think you're referring to the MOOC model. There's also a Georgia Tech model, which has been a, an online master's, which is a little more closed. Um, we're certainly working um, for, I mean, through CEMC, but now through everything we're doing, putting so much more online. And I think there's, a, there's two things here. There's, there's, there's putting things online in an open way that allows access just to see things. I think that's, that's, that's very much something we should be doing. Um, but I think there's more to, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's more to classes and to education than simply re releasing things, um, you know, releasing online acts, uh, lectures and online um, materials. And I think that's great. And then we have that, if you go and look at the Open Math and Open CS um, websites now, um, there's a lot of material there uh, aimed perhaps at, at more at, at high school and at early year university, but there's an extension to, there's an ex expectation to expand that throughout the curriculum. But I think there's also a, um, there's a lot of room for doing things which are much more interactive and whether, you know, it, at, at, the, at the higher levels and throughout our education. And this is actually what COVID is teaching us about what, what it is to, uh, to um, do online education. Because while MOOCs and watching the, especially I, I, I don't want to critique what MIT is doing, I think it's brilliant, but um, are, are very exciting, um, they're, 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 many of them are quite static. And I think we have to be careful not to put up, um, just to sort of contribute in that space. I think where we really have an enormous advantage is in, is in the full educational experience through online education. And, and I think we have to, and, and we're learning even more about that every day now as we're putting everything online. What works, what doesn't, what keeps people engaged? Because putting, we don't want to put up um, um, video lectures where only 1% of people actually finish the course. We want things where, you know, which is much more like our, our, uh, our university experience where the vast majority of people are engaged all the way through. And so we're trying to find that balance between this, this, this um, public and open distribution, but to things that people are actually going to complete and actually going to feel like they, they're participating in and actively learn. Because ultimately it's, it's about, about what we come away with from these courses, both immediately and you know, for, for speaking to the alumni 30 years later. You know, this is, what, what are you left with? And that's something we're still looking at in, in the online world. Oh, thank you, Mark. I, certainly online education can be very engaging. I've done some of those online courses myself and properly structured, they can be very effective. Uh, another very question uh, from our audience. I find the vision exciting and the fact that it intersects with the pandemic is an interesting challenge and opportunity. Given that offices are in a sense dissolving away, are there thoughts about going on co-op while physically sitting on campus still? Clearly, this impacts the square meterage requirements on campus. I mean, in a sense, we, we are doing that right now, which is, you know, uh, to, to greater and lesser degrees. I, I mean, there's, a, there's another question there about, I mean, what is, what is the role of campus in an educational environment? What is the role of co-op in an educational environment is, 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 is very interesting because this, the, the employees, the co-op employees, are now also spread around the world. And I have to say, this is something that... Um, we're navigating now. I mean, I won't claim that we've had the same levels of uptake on co-op in the past term that, uh, that uh, we, we've had for the, you know, our, our tradition of having 99% employment or something like that. Um, what, we've, what we've done, uh, I'll, just, I'll just say as a, as, a, as a slight aside, is that we've allowed many students to be flexible about taking, about switching their streams, about changing from co-op to non-co-op or non-co-op to co-op. Um, dynamically this time because we're in a we're in a very uh, fluid environment. As as far as doing co-op, I mean, it's it's the general question about how we work online. Um, and I, I think this is and co-op jobs are perhaps perhaps harder because they are the they are the entry level jobs. They're the you know I think what we need to do is that we need to provide guidance both to our students and guidance to our to our co-op employers. And this needs to be again a dialogue. And, you know, I'm looking at many of our co-op employers out there. And, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, this, this is not something that, that's easy. And, uh, and I know that it's not easy to have your workforce distributed.
but it's particularly um, um, difficult at the at the entry level, at the co-op level. So again, I think many of them, I hope that many of the things that we learn through our educational delivery about what sticks as you like, what engages us, is, is many of these same things are going to be uh, um, things which are part of our, our co-op engagement as well. And of course, we as a university need to be talking to those co-op students precisely about this. You know, what worked in this environment? Because we are the conduits. We have to come back to our, to our, to our employer partners and say, um, here's what's working for our students, you know, and, and, and what's working on your side. And I think like, like so many, so much of our educational process, it needs to be a dialogue, dialogue between university and students, dialogue between university and co-op partners. Well, that's our last question. So Mark, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with, with us today, the vision for the faculty of math and taking the time to chat. And anyone who wants to engage with Mark further, you heard about his upcoming listening tour. So there'll be lots of opportunities to engage.